So we made a lot of money in 2020 and 2021 on all that stuff. But then beginning of 2022, I got something bad's gonna happen. And then I have another guy that's a, he's a big lawyer, has like 50 lawyers underneath him. In his email signature, signature it says, I'm not here to make money, I'm here to protect my money. When the market interest, we bought 17 flips in one month. Oh last, my gosh. Last year, never do that again. Then the interest rates went up, we were screwed. I've had to bring 30 to closing, 20 some to close. Like wow. we are bleeding, we've been bleeding money. But now we're on the upswing. That's why I've got to get this wholesale business going. Yeah, yeah. And we just bought another flip. We're, we're starting today in Raleigh. So we're slowly trying to get back in it, but we took a bath. In the very beginning of 2022, January, I go, interest rates are going up. Told my whole team, stop buying flips, stop. And I still ended up in five. And those five that I bought in November in 2021, they were just bigger projects. And we were planning on making about six, 700 grand on the five collectively. And by the end of those projects being done, I had to write a check for half a million dollars. It was that big of a difference. Whoa. Yeah, it was huge, 20%. I mean, Phoenix went down in a lot of the certain areas, 16, 20%. So if you were selling a house for 800 grand, these houses went down 160,000 bucks. So I went to a point where I could just go to my partner, I go, I'm not, writing a check. We're gonna refinance these things into yep. six and a half percent interest rates and I'm holding these things. But a lot of people, a lot of flippers, including me, getting stuck in that situation, 2022 was a bloodbath for a lot of people. It's hard. Yeah. And 17 of them at the same time, holy crap. Yeah, we refinanced uh, a few of them with Civic Financial who's no longer in business. But right now my biggest uh, problem is being able to refinance because my tax returns come back showing a loss. So that's a negative for me, um, even though obviously we make money. Have you uh, have you gotten to like DSCR lenders and stuff? Yeah. And they still want Well, now they're wanting like loan to value is like 70%. Yeah. yeah, it's tough. So you have to bring a ton. And because the values went down about 50,000 on ours, you know, like we're having to bring a ton of money and I've got private money on, I do private money on all my flips. Now I'm trying to find private lenders that will finance like three to five years. Maybe. I got a guy. Um, I have a guy, seven, he'll do 7% That's exactly uh, what I'm looking for. Okay. And I'll give you his number. His, his name's Alec. He owns a tile company in Phoenix and he'll refinance you out of those bad situations. And then I have another guy that's a he's a big lawyer has like 50 lawyers underneath him in his email signature signature it says I'm not here to make money I'm here to protect my money and it, that's like his email signature and so he's all he's like I don't even care about making money I just want to outbeat inflation so I'm gonna charge you whatever the current inflation rate is for the three I think he's at like eight percent right now for how long? At, I mean, how long do they want to seven ten years no way yeah they'll do a 30-year am seven ten right. year balloon interest only or no, interest no. amortized okay yeah it'll, it'll pay down principal and everything I'll connect you with them wow does Will they do 100%? No, I don't think so. They'll probably do 15, 20% down. Okay. So you're le be better than what you're currently better, looking yeah. at. Yeah, way better. Sweet. And the rate, I mean, you can't. And it's amortized too. And it's an individual, so it's not an institution. It's easier to work I with. I love working with individuals, yeah. The best part too is that you could go to your private money lenders that you know maybe have to fill in the gap and go be my partner. Yep. Like stick in this deal with me for three, five years. And instead of being my private money lender, be my private money partner and just stick in the deal with me for three, five years. It's either that or I gotta shovel myself out. A lot of people, a lot of people are in the same situation. It was tough last year. It was great. I mean, prices go, you know, offers $100,000 over asking here at least. We bought deals that the ARV was 500 and I would buy the deals at like 450 to flip them. Like how the hell do you make money on that? You don't, but what you do is you're like, I know I'm gonna sell it for 600 so that's where my bump was and we were planning we would we knew we were dancing on thin ice we just didn't know when it was gonna end so we're like yeah we can we can handle if we lose money on a couple let's just be really aggressive so we made a lot of money in 2020 and 2021 on yeah. all that stuff but then beginning of 2022 I got something bad's gonna happen this so year. so what do you think right now where was as far as interest rates would you buy a flip right now I would buy a flip right now if I could do 40 cents on the dollar because I think rates are gonna go up tw two more times this year people go oh well you've got you know elections going on and this is going on and they're gonna lower the rate to try and help Biden get reelected and blah, blah. I go, I'm like, guys, the Fed has told us they're raising the rates faster, higher, and keeping them there longer than originally anticipated. That was just said two weeks ago and two months ago. Because of that, I go, okay, anything that I'm buying, let's say the ARV today is 400. I'm gonna plan on taking 12% off of any of my ARVs and go, all right, I'm not gonna sell it 400. I'm gonna sell it at 360. I'm gonna sell it at 330, 340. That's my ARV. So when a wholesaler sends me a deal and they go, hey, ARV is 400. I go, no, it's not. Right. It's probably three, a month or two out. There you go. And so as long as you understand that, then I, then base your number off that new ARV. And so we, I have to buy flips. Whether I want to or not, I have to buy flips because my TV show. So we have to have 10 flips going on for the TV show all the time. So we're bought, we have active flips going on right now. I'm basing off the new, the new ARV and then I'm going like 50 cents on the dollar and everything, which is hard. 
Right. But when you yeah. have a lot of deal flow, you get to cherry pick the good ones. So who is finding those deals for you? You have VAs cold calling or how are you getting your deals? Yeah, VAs cold calling. So we have Start Virtual doing our cold calling. That's where 40% of my deals come from is just our direct to seller. From Start Virtual just doing all the cold calls, setting appointments, my acquisition team does the thing, the stuff. And then the other like 60% of where my deals come from are my students. So they're out doing the same thing I'm doing. And I'm just like, I'll buy that, I'll buy that, I'll buy that, I'll buy that. So do your VAs close the deal or? Yeah. They close the deal, but when it gets a little hairy, like let's say the deal that you're actively working, that sub two deal, that required real rapport. Right. And so at that situation, the VA is like, oh, this is gonna require a higher level person. So they'll, the VA will pass it off to somebody that's American that will actually be able to build the rapport at a higher level. Right, what about the CRM? Do you have your own CRM or what do they use? Man, we've tried so many CRMs, Podio, and I'm currently using Deal Automator, which is Cody Sperber's yeah. thing. I have that actually. I'd never use it though. It's great. I didn't know it was a CRM. Yeah, it's a C it's an everything all in one. It does like lead scoring, so it'll like go into your. It basically has AI. It tells you the probability of them selling and at what price and what is going on, and it bases on like their job, like all sorts of weird things. It aggregates the information. Goes, this is a great off-market deal. Your team should be calling this lead. Deal Automator is really, really good. It's like a hundred bucks a month or something. I, it's free. I don't know. Okay, yeah. deal, yeah, but deal I never use it. You should be. It's great. Wow, that's amazing. Yeah, deal automator is good. And then, uh, so I think flips, we're still doing them, but I'm not doing any bird deals right now. I don't want to refinance into bad bad debt right now. So I'm 90% of what I do is acquire and hold. And 90% of my deals are sub two deals at 3%, 4%. So I'm not susceptible to what's going on in the marketplace. The bad market is actually super helpful. We, Kevin and I were talking about this last night. If interest rates go up again, which I believe they will, um, just helps me. Not on flips, but it helps me in my acquisition business because I just gobble up sub two deals all day long. We'll walk out of this thing in five years and I'll look back and I go, that was the that was the moment in history where I made a hundred million dollars in future wealth because I just gobbled up hundreds and hundreds of properties. Like we'll buy 300 single family homes, sub two this year and put them in the portfolio. And then we'll probably buy We've got 160 unit on seller finance a couple days ago, 154 unit on seller finance a couple days ago. Any money down on these? Uh, Lubbock is a six Lubbock's a $7 million deal, $1 million down, 5% interest, 50 year no, no balloon, crazy. Private money for the million down or you just um, use your own capital? That one I'll use my own capital. Okay. Um, and then I've got biggest seller finance deal I've got is 160 unit, it's in Tucson, $20 million purchase, seller wants seven million dollars down okay it's big so where does that money come from i'll there syndicate right so I, I i'll go to my students and go hey who wants to be a partner with me on this deal and i'll raise seven million bucks for that. i have like 45 days to raise the seven million bucks and that deal we bought at 20 seller will carry 13 at four percent interest only for seven years so i won't pay it down but it will go we'll we'll end up exiting that in seven years at probably like 29 maybe 30 million bucks. go in just fix it up raise rents that type of thing he hasn't raised rents in 10 years oh wow it's like it's just he, but he's 78 years old and he's like I'm, i don't have the energy anymore and he's been self-managing like for us on the acquisition side we just find data dill automator helps with this how do you find a seller that is actively managing the asset themselves dill automator helps out with that it's like oh this guy it indicates that this guy doesn't have a property management company in place he's self-managing so what it does is it cross-references who's the contact information for the leasing company and the this and the that and if it's the same phone number as the owner like oh this guy's self-managing he hates his life yeah he can't scale he doesn't have ops in place call him up and go i'll take this headache off your plate that's good to know because i was I was talking to that guy, Dwayne, the young guy. Yeah. And I said, look, you could even um, maybe open up a property management group mm -hmm. and still make money. But if there's a way to look up people who aren't using managers, yeah. then that would be a great Deal source. Yeah. There was a conversation about the market conditions later.